For over a year, two-year-old Miraz has been living with his mother in prison. He spends the weekends with his father at home in Istanbul. His father does his best to give the little boy a normal life. In the last two years, more than 160,000 people have been jailed in Turkey as part of purges by the government. Human rights organizations estimate they include 700 children imprisoned along with their mothers. The children are picked up from the prison in Gebza by their fathers on Saturday afternoons. Cengiz Akbaba's two-year-old son, Miraz, has been behind bars for 18 months. He's grown used to being apart from his mother on weekends. Like his wife, Cengiz is Kurdish. She campaigned for the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party, the HDP, and was sentenced to four years in prison for spreading terrorist propaganda. The prison is on the outskirts of Istanbul. In that respect, Cengiz and his wife count themselves lucky. It's fortunate that the prison isn't miles away in Anatolia, so it's possible for us to pick up the children. He's gotten together with other fathers to organize a car share. Barish Kizil's wife is also a political prisoner. Did you miss Daddy? Uh -huh. Did Mummy cry? No, she didn't, is the child's reply. My wife just posted some comments on social media. She was charged with propaganda. That's right, terrorist propaganda. Our lawyer told us that under normal circumstances, the comments wouldn't have been deemed criminal. But the law's been changed. The tough new anti-terrorism bill passed last year is the reason Miraz and his mother, Gulistan, are now sharing a cell with more than a dozen others. Miraz's playground is a prison yard. The first thing he wants to do when his father picks him up is go to a real playground. For a few hours, he gets to do what other children his age take for granted. Miraz was just six months old when his mother was arrested. The family agreed he should stay with her, even behind bars. His mother has tried to make their cell a bit cozy. At least now there's another child there that he can play with. He hasn't been in jail as long as Miraz. They're in the same block and can visit each other now and then. Miraz won't get to live in freedom for another two years. We don't want him to think that his mother's abandoning him. He understands that she can't come with him. We just hope that what he's going through won't leave him scarred. But it will, say families who've been through the experience. Reynas is now 10. He spent three years living with his mother in prison. His father, Osman Kurum, says he still can't talk about that time. We have to leave the lighter in the hallway when he goes to bed, because he has night fears. Loud noises make him jump. And when he goes to the toilet, he needs me to wait outside. His mother is still in prison. Women serving sentences can only have their children with them until they turn six. Renas only sees her, usually behind glass, during visiting hours. Barış Kizil also says his son has changed. He was taken into custody along with his mother. <laughs> I got a call from my wife telling me to come at once, that she was being arrested. By the time I got there, she and my son had already been taken away. 
I was on my way to the police station when I got a call and was instructed to pick my son up. At the time, he was still being breastfed. The experience traumatized him. It's affected his speech. He's three now, and his language skills are worse than they used to be. Today, Genghis has brought his little boy to the sea. Miraz wants to look at seagulls. He already sees them in the skies above the prison yard. How can the Turkish government and its supporters justify the high number of children currently behind bars in the country? Abdurrahman Dilipak is a newspaper columnist and a vocal backer of Erdogan. He believes that Miraz's mother and other political prisoners deliberately sought out their fate. It would be worth finding out if these women got pregnant on purpose before they engaged in their criminal activities in order to exploit their situation for propaganda purposes. It's one of many conspiracy theories put forward by the government in recent years. In the evening, Miraz visits his grandparents. They originally come from the Kurdish southeast. Years ago, they fled the violent conflict between the Turkish state and the Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK, and moved to Istanbul. They believe the high number of political prisoners currently in prison with young children points to a deliberate government strategy. A woman convicted of theft can expect to be released after two years if she has a small child. But that doesn't apply to our women. The grandparents help out if Cengiz has to work on the weekend. Miraz gets to enjoy his grandmother's home-cooked food. In prison, he has to eat the same food as the inmates. Visitors aren't allowed to bring the prisoners food. He often asks, is mommy coming too? We have to say no, but we'll be visiting her soon. When he was a baby, he often cried in the evenings. And I would make Cengiz take him back to the prison in the middle of the night. It broke my heart. I would end up crying myself. What can I say? It's a difficult time for the child, for my daughter, for all of us. Miraz likes to play with his grandparents' broom. In prison, he's often allowed to sweep the yard. Fear overshadows the whole family's life. The state is increasingly intolerant of any form of criticism against the government. So we might end up paying a price for speaking openly about our plight. But if I go to prison for speaking up for the rights of my son and the other 700 children in jail, then so be it. This prisoner advocacy organization in Istanbul sees cases like theirs all the time. They receive reports of women imprisoned with children on an almost daily basis. Janzu Shekerji is a lawyer. She says the state isn't doing anything to look after these children's needs. Prison staff aren't qualified to react to the needs of small children. And the government wasn't able to tell us exactly how many children are in which prisons. Cengiz Akbaba will be taking his little boy back to the prison later today. One last breakfast with Cengiz's brother and mother. They also want to see Miraz on the weekend. Dropping your child off in prison is a hard thing to have to do. It destroys you. I tell myself that at one point it will be over. At one point my wife will be released. 
And there'll come a time when the people of this country realize what's going on in its prisons. Even though the media aren't allowed to report on it, and almost every political meeting is banned. <laughs> it's time to go. Cengiz doesn't want his wife worrying. She's only allowed to make one phone call a week. Miraz's bag is packed. He says goodbye to his grandmother. Take care and come back soon. Say hi to mummy for us. As Cengiz heads to the prison, his worries return. Is his little boy really safe there? What are the women like that he shares a cell with? They have to trust that the other inmates will be tolerant. They might complain if the children cry at night. There are 15 women in a cell. That's the sort of thing that preys on my mind. Cengiz doesn't want Miraz to sense how much his parents are suffering. At the prison in Gebze, it's time to say goodbye. Shall we go to mummy? Do you want to take the balloon? Once inside the prison gates, Cengiz will hand his two-year-old son over to a warden. Next weekend, he'll be back.